Let's move on to the psychological data on suicide. Your question is, why did my loved one choose suicide? Could I have done anything to stop them? Last year, 1.2 million Americans attempted suicide. In the Bible, Moses, Elijah, and Jonah contemplated suicide. No matter how smart, wise, rich, powerful, loving, or spiritually evolved someone is, there may be times in their life where they consider suicide. So then why? A psychology professor named Dr. Thomas Joyner developed a model based on very extensive research. He says people who die by suicide have three things in common. The first is feeling like they're a burden on others, that their death is worth more than their life. The second is loneliness, what he calls thwarted belonging. And then the third is fearlessness. In one of his lectures, Dr. Joyner shows a video of a man who's chit-chatting right before he ends his life. And normal people will blink every three to four seconds. The man in the video never blinks once. And according to Dr. Joyner, this is characteristic of the moments and the minutes before a human does something that is daunting, difficult, and requires concentration. <coughs> They're wooden, determined, staring down a tunnel. And that's what people look like when they're about to give a piano concert because they're about to do something that requires focus and resolve when you're about to box someone for a world championship and when you are about to kill yourself. In Hawaii at 4 a.m., the big wave surfers, because I lived right next to the beach, I'd see them, they'd all jump into their trucks and they would just start downing these Red Bulls and they would be <coughs> blasting really heavy, you know, like heavy metal music. And they'd be screaming while they're driving to the surf breaks, you know, just screaming like, and they were, they're just basically they're trying to psych themselves up. And they explained to me that when they're out in the ocean, relatively speaking, they're like a flea poised on the edge of a giant <coughs> moving wall of water, which has the force of a multi-story concrete building right about to crush them. And right when they're like about to drop in, like go, every cell in their body is screaming at them, no. And they said that that survival instinct, it is so strong that they have to go against every cell in their body in order to drop into a barrel of surf that could potentially kill them. That's not courage. Courage is embracing your fear and acting anyways. That's fearlessness, denying your fear and acting anyways. Dr. Joyner says people who attempt suicide have taken all conceivable measures to enact the outcome of death, and yet at the very last moment they flinch. They blink. The people we lose have learned somehow or another not to blink and not to flinch. Dr. Joyner asks, how in the world do people work up to that state, to that very unnatural state where they can ignore that very innate instinct that is in us? All creatures across eons and eons of evolution have that instinct to live and survive deep within our cells, bones, and souls. It takes years of extreme athletic training for a surfer to drop into a death barrel of a big wave. There's no way you could have stopped your loved one once they got to that point. There's a documentary called The Bridge, where a film crew set up a camera on the Golden Gate Bridge. 
when anyone stopped. Just take a picture or admire the view. The camera would zoom in on them. And if they did anything suspicious, they'd call the authorities. It was impossible to tell who would jump and who wouldn't. Scores of trained professionals studied the camera footage. If they cannot predict, and they're professionals who are trained, they've done this several hundreds of times, I'm telling you, there is no way you could have predicted. There is no way you could have known. Kevin Hines was suicidal from the age of nine. He struggled with mental illness his entire life. So he went to the bridge and he jumped. As soon as his hands left the rail, he knew it was a mistake. In the four seconds it takes to hit the water, he asked God to save him. He hit the water, breaking his vertebrae, then he surfaced back up to the top, and he felt a little sea lion nudging him. A group of seals were circling him, keeping his body afloat for four to five hours until the Coast Guard found him. He says he knows those seals were God. Another survivor said, I instantly realized that everything in my life that I thought was unfixable was totally fixable, except for having just jumped. Research shows that someone who is suicidal will continually attempt suicide repeatedly, even after several attempts. However, if they have a near-death experience from one of their suicide attempts, they will never attempt suicide again. There is something about experiencing God, about feeling truly loved, that no matter how awful your life is, it has immense value. Whether you believe in God or not, whether you believe in an afterlife or not, whether or not medical science explains near-death experiences as hallucinations or oxygen deprivation to the brain, whether it's real or not, it's real to them. Those people never attempted suicide again after years and years of trying to die. They chose to live. Thank you.